This street is only 2.5 kilometers long, but it is the entire pulse of Yogyakarta city. Operating 24-7, there is never a moment where this street will appear boring. Super good. Love it. It actually looks like a zombie apocalypse with everyone with their hands out walking in the same direction. There is music, there is entertainment, there is a lot of people. Is this the city that never sleeps? This is like the Orchard Road of Singapore, the Wang Fu Jing of Beijing, the 5th Avenue of New York. Maliboro Street is synonymous to the main business district in the entire Java Island. We will be wandering through this street day and night to show you what we can experience in this amazing street. Our first stop of the day is to head to Bering Harjo Market. This market is one of the oldest markets in Yogyakarta and it is in the heart of Maliboro Street. It sells anything from traditional batik to traditional snacks to everything that you want. It looks like the wet market in Singapore, but it's way bigger and you can find anything under the sky. Apparently, this place is also sectioned out into three different buildings. So, we are just stepping inside the second building and there is more things to see and more things to buy, more things to shop. Our next stop is to just venture a little south of Malioboro to one of the most esteemed places in Jogja. Standing outside the palace of Jogjakarta, also known as the Kraton. This palace is a residence of the Sultan of Jogjakarta and it is a short distance away from Malioboro Street. This palace was built in the 18th century by Sultan Hamin Kobugono I, who founded the Sultanate of Jogjakarta. Subsequently, the sultans who lived here were very heavily influenced by the merchants whom they trade with. Apart from the gold-plated railings, you can find collections of China porcelain vases on display and Baroque-style lampposts from the Europeans. Unfortunately, the first palace is currently under renovation and you could imagine how it would look like when the full entire palace is open to the public. While touring the Kraton, we're also treated to a rousing performance of Wayang Kulit. Wayang Kulit is a puppet show play that has origins in Java and often tells a story about good versus evil. Behind the puppeteer is an ensemble orchestra known as the Gamelan. The instruments they play consist of bonangs, gongs, metallophones, and they produce a very therapeutic sound. Something that I could indulge in hours after hours listening to this ensemble. We knew we were so hungry after the Kraton, so we spent the rest of the day hunting for food. So we got a bakwang kawi, which is soup with noodles and a lot of toppings. And I saw like some people eating it with the chili sauce, so I'm going to add chili into the soup. Love all the ingredients that's put inside here. And this isn't the only food we ate on Malioboro Street. Throughout the week, we came back here often because we knew that there will always be vendors selling some tasty Indonesian food day and night. It seems like there's always something new to try. This is Malioboro Street and it's as local as it could get. Yeah. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Our food escapade didn't end with Bakwan Kawi. A stone throw away, we found this street vendor selling what I now know as Katan Baka. Glutinous rice. Tastes very good. Taking my first bite. Oh, there's some fragrance behind it. Super good. Love it. There's a tinge of sweetness and the coconut taste. After lunch, we continued walking north of Malioboro Street, looking at people, soaking in a hubbub, until we came across this market known as Terras Malioboro. Just like Bering Harjo Market, there are rows after rows after rows of shops selling everything. 
The market also appears newer but on a much smaller scale. We came across this shop that sells dark beer and just wanted to try it out. I'm going to open up and see what the flavors are inside. There's pandan, there's ube, and there is kacang puteh. Not kacang puteh, it's called durian. And I'm going to try the ube version because I kind of really like ube after visiting the Philippines. Oh, look at this. It's like a small little baked cookie. It's, it's actually pretty delicious. I kind of like it. As night falls, Malioboro Street becomes a completely different spectacle. The weather will become cooler, and throngs of people will congregate on the street to either have food, catch up with friends, do their shopping, or even enjoy music. It's just so lively here. Look at how exciting everything is right now. There is music, there is entertainment, there is a lot of people. We continue walking north till we reach an obelisk, that contains a very special meaning for the people of Jojakata. Tugu means monument and this monument is located at the northern end of Malioboro Street and this is a symbol of Jojakata's cultural heritage. Jojakata is also known as the city of education so during the graduation a lot of students will come over here and take graduation pictures in front of the monument. After Tugu, we headed down south to get to another must-visit destination in Jogjakarta. We are currently in front of Alun Alun Kiedo, which is these two huge banyan trees at the back. It is a plaza known for nightlife with neon lit go karts for rent, snack stands, and according to the locals here, Alun Alun is believed to be a very sacred and religious place. There are two large banyan trees in the middle of the square and it is said that these two trees are inhabited by guardian spirits. So I've got a blindfold here and guess what I'm going to do? The myth is that whoever could walk with their eyes closed, it is said that their wishes and desires will come true. Are you curious and excited about this? <laughs> it doesn't look very easy. <laughs> They look like they're way off, like 90 degrees off. It actually looks like a zombie apocalypse with everyone with their hands out walking in the same direction. I don't know what the rules are. I'm trying to start uh, facing the trees. Can I just start in the middle of the trees? You can start walking. Let me test the air. Everyone's putting their hands out so I'll do the same. Oh my god, where are you? The car should be behind me. Ah, what's this? This is like you know when, when you do an eye test in, in primary school and you try to memorize all the letters before it's your turn so that you don't have to wear spectacles. Finish? Terima kasih. My guardian angel. <laughs> Rub me through the trees. So Shar, did you wish for anything? Oh. I forgot! <laughs> I love this place for the huge communion of people who is just snacking around and sitting around and having their own picnics. It's such a beautiful, beautiful location for get together with your friends and family. Walking down the streets of Malaboro is super exciting. Every single time we saw food on a side street, we would go and get it. There's never one moment where it's dull here in Malaboro Street. There's this one other place we have to recommend to you. It is this department store which sells batik and tons of traditional local handicraft. Every Friday and Saturday, there's even a cabaret show on the top floor which unfortunately we missed because we couldn't get tickets. But I heard it is one of the best shows Jokja got to offer. After Hamza Batik, we realized it is already super late, but there is still no sign of the crowd abating. It's so bustling, it's so noisy, there's so many people, traffic, sound, sights, there's so much energy here today. Is this the city that truly never sleeps? Tell us more in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video.